Are you a joyful person? Good morning, everyone. This is our reflection question for today. Victor Frankl, in his book Man's Search for Meaning, narrates how one day in the concentration camp, the Gestapo ordered him to strip. He obediently did as directed and stood before his persecutors, stark naked but with head held high. The only possession on his person was his wedding band. Walking up to him, one of the guards grabbed his hand and forcibly pulled it off his finger. Victor sheepishly submitted. He just had no alternative. But even as he suffered this shameful indignity, he said to himself, You can take away my wife, you can take away my children, you can strip me of my clothes, but there is one thing no person can ever take from me, and that is my freedom to choose how I react to what happens to me. That was Viktor Frankl's resolute determination, and that was the secret of his ultimate victory. In his words, Happiness is a choice which ultimately transforms our tragedies into triumphs. No one takes away our joy and happiness. It is our choice. The same goes for the first Christians. They were persecuted and many of them died. In an article in Today in the Word, it quotes a man who lived in the 3rd century who was anticipating death, and he penned these last words to a friend. It's a bad world, an incredibly bad world. But I have discovered in the midst of it quiet and holy people who have learned a great secret. They have found a joy which is a thousand times better than any pleasure of our sinful life. They are despised and persecuted, but they care not. They are masters of their souls. They have overcome the world. These people are the Christians, and I am one of them. In today's first reading, St. Paul writes to the first Christian community he founded in Europe around 50 AD. He wrote this letter, possibly the most attractive of all his letters, while he was in prison six years later. It is filled with a spirit of joy. In today's pandemic, there is much uncertainty. Many have died. Many have lost their jobs. Businesses have gone bankrupt. This invisible enemy has brought fear and anxiety in many. Can we ever be joyful? Indeed, as Christmas looms, the world, for many, is enveloped in gloom. Oftentimes, we define happiness as the absence of sorrow and pain. If this is so, then we will truly feel burdened because we put conditions on it. It will purely be on the basis of what we feel. It is self-centered. I can only be happy if... We cannot be happy if it's solely based on emotions. One of the secrets to real joy is living a righteous life. St. Paul prays for the Philippians and for us, and I quote, And this is my prayer that your love may increase ever more and more in knowledge and every kind of perception to discern what is of value so that you may be pure and blameless for the day of Christ filled with the fruit of righteousness. That fruit of righteousness is joy. And righteousness is all about following God's commandment of love when we choose to love the people God has given us, especially those who test our patience, who betray us, persecute us, slander us, we are choosing joy over a life of perpetual anguish and misery. Another secret to real joy is our faith in God. When our life revolves around Jesus, when Christ fills our day's thoughts, when we allow the Holy Spirit to guide us in all our decisions, when we let go and let God take over, there is calming and indescribable joy. The vacuum brought about by fear in the uncertainty surrounding us is replaced by the joy and a sense of assurance that we are not alone. A third secret to real joy is gratitude to God. When we focus on what we have, then on what we lack. When we are mindful that throughout our life, problems have come and gone, and yet we are still here, we are blessed. Contentment and joy are gained in God's assurance. My grace is sufficient for you. As I was praying the rosary, a thought came to me. How can the joyful mysteries of the rosary be joyful when... As I walked through each mystery, the journey of Mary was fraught with uncertainty. The Annunciation, let it be done to me according to your word. That is faith. She had that. The Visitation, Mary meets the equally pregnant Elizabeth and they both had hope. The Nativity, there is no place to deliver the baby except in a stable while they were being pursued by Herod. She was not bothered by all these because she was filled with love for her baby as any mother should. 
Indeed, when we have truly embraced Jesus, when we fully rely on Him and not on our own strength, when we have purified our hearts to understand the meaning of sacrifice and love in this pandemic, we can say that the world has not overcome us, but our joy has overcome our world. Faith, hope, and love, but the greatest of these is love. Let us pray in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Heavenly Father, make my joy complete. Make my prayer life consistently constant and lead me to a righteous life that is fully reliant on you, forever grateful for the blessings that you have given me. This I pray in Jesus' holy and mighty name. Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. God bless your families, brothers and sisters. God bless our Catholic faith and couples for Christ.